Kirby, the pink puffball, has been one of Nintendo's most popular characters and video game franchises ever since his 92 debut with Kirby's Dream Land. Since then, Kirby has had over 30 games and the series has sold over 34 million units. But in the past year or so, Kirby as a character has exploded onto meme culture across the internet. You can actually see this sharp rise of interest in Kirby memes on Google Trends. Seemingly everywhere you go, there are Kirby memes of some form and in several formats. You have the template of Kirby with a smug look on his face pointing to an often inconvenient truth on a canvas in which he is often schooling libtards with facts and logic. There's the format in which Kirby is holding holding up a brick with a message inscribed on it. Sometimes he's sending his love, and sometimes a less heartwarming message. You have the Kirby with earphones on who's jamming to music but can't hear any oncoming danger around him. But it's not just that. Kirby, the music from his games, the TV show, and the many memes he has spawned, they seem to have infected nearly every avenue of the internet. <laughs> Beyond just memes, Kirby has become an aesthetic of his own. I constantly see people branding themselves as Kirby, decorating their rooms with Kirby, making Kirby-related art, and much more. Kirby has become a cultural zeitgeist in his own right. But what is it about this unassuming, cute little pink blob that attracts so much attention and makes him so likable? I interviewed a friend of mine named Cherry, a girl who has made Kirby the central focus of her entire life in hopes of finding some answers. So Cherry, what is it about Kirby that you like so much? He's cute. Thank you so much, Cherry. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Um, you ever smoke DMT, bro? The question of what makes Kirby so likable, so relatable, and so relevant is one that I've been asking myself a lot recently. You see, before being known as Glink, I had an old YouTube channel called Kirby Dreamstar that I've alluded to before. And before that, I was on a gaming forum, and still am, as Kirby Hyrule. And even before that, I had an account on that same forum called Shadow Kirby, dating back to when I created it in 2005 as a 10-year-old. The reason I mention all this is that, for some reason, during my adolescence, I was obsessed with Kirby, and he was the character I often made a part of my identity. You can clearly see it in my past YouTube Usernames. I've been reflecting on my past fascination with Kirby and wondering why I related to him so much. And I think I've realized why not only I related to him, but why so many others seem to as well. During that time, and to a much lesser extent even now, I was a naive, shy, and innocent kid. But beneath that, I had aspirations of becoming something more, of imitating the heroes I saw in games, in TV shows, and movies. The classic archetype of a hero we wielding a sword, or embarking on an epic journey. These are tropes a lot of young men, and probably even women, aspire to and find meaning in. In a very unconventional way, Kirby encapsulates that role, and despite appearing at first to be totally unprepared or unequipped to fill the role of a hero, he does. The history of Kirby's development offers fascinating insight into why his design became what we know it as now. In a 1993 interview with a young Masa Hiro Sakurai, the late Satoru Iwata, and Shigeru Miyamoto discusses the creation of Kirby. Iwata explains, when someone really loves a character, they like to sketch them in their notebooks, right? That's why we gave Kirby a simple circular design, so anyone could draw him. You see, the simple design of Kirby is one thing that makes him such an accessible character to enjoy. Once you see Kirby, you instantly recognize him. And of course, all throughout the internet, there are loads of designs and artists 
artist renditions of Kirby, probably in part fueled by the very same reason. When discussing the name Kirby, Miyamoto said, We wanted a name that would sound like an American idol, but Kirby was actually the name of an important lawyer at Nintendo of America. <laughs> There's actually a really interesting story behind the name Kirby that Miyamoto is alluding to here. Back in 1984, in a case between Universal Studios and Nintendo, a lawyer named John Kirby defended Nintendo's use of the name Donkey Kong, which Universal claimed was copyright infringement of King Kong. John Kirby won the case for Nintendo, and the company was so grateful that they gifted him a $30,000 boat as a sign of gratitude. In addition to that, Nintendo also included the name Kirby in a list of potential names sent to the development team, which was originally planning to name the beloved puffball Twinkle Popo. But luckily they went with the name Kirby since it appealed to American sensibilities more. And ever since then, Kirby has been one of the most recognized names in gaming. And finally, Sakurai explains how Kirby was originally designed to be an easy game for children, but from the second title onward, they implemented copying enemy abilities to create a more innovative and interesting game for everyone to enjoy. Kirby is always the central hero of his adventures, despite being small in stature and having no sharp edges or defined limbs in sight. No hulking stature, muscular tone, scruffy beard, or masculine face. Nah, none of that. Instead, you get this cute, cute little, cute little puffball. But in contrast to his cutesy appearance, Kirby is often portrayed in heroic positions in his games. From wielding a sword, absorbing a range of abilities, to defeating nightmarish creatures and undertaking fantastical, epic adventures. The central theme of Kirby's archetype is that anyone can achieve great things. That no matter how cuddly and cute or innocent and small you are, you can always conquer the challenges on life's journey. You might think I'm just projecting these attributes onto Kirby that in reality there is no depth to him as a character. But to support what I'm saying, let's compare Kirby to the most similar character he has in gaming, Jigglypuff. Not only do Kirby and Jigglypuff share similar qualities in terms of appearance, both being cutesy pink puffballs, completely rounded and devoid of any real dialogue, but they are also both Nintendo characters, and they have made appearances in many of the same games together. However, you don't see the same appeal that Kirby has within Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff. Unlike Kirby, Jigglypuff is a very one-dimensional character with no real depth. For one, he doesn't fulfill any central role in the Pokemon universe. He doesn't undergo any sort of hero's journey, and the only real transformation comes in the form of his Pokemon evolution into Wigglytuff, who is also a pretty superficial and forgettable character. Jiggly's signature ability is literally to perform a lullaby in order to put his foes to sleep, a move that very much fits with Jigglypuff as a cute and innocent character. That's Jigglypuff's one and only role, being cute. Kirby, on the other hand, completely transcends and transforms himself with new roles and new abilities. And despite being cute, Kirby comes off as fearless rather than helpless. And yet, for some reason, Kirby is consistently the worst character in every Smash Brothers game. Except for 64, he's god tier in that one. And you know, it really sucks because I, I like Kirby, I like playing as him. But I guess being at the bottom does fit with his underdog role. I believe that the popularity and success of Kirby as a character is in large part due to the fact that he is surprisingly relatable. The endless Kirby memes and cultural phenomenon that he has become are the result of the relatability and depth of Kirby as an idea, the innocent underdog who can become anything. People now more than ever use Kirby to vicariously feel that, despite appearing powerless on the surface, that they can become a badass just like Kirby. What reflecting on this has taught me more than anything is that in life, you can either become a Kirby or a Jigglypuff. As much as I like Kirby, though, everyone has to grow up eventually. Okay, now we're done with that. Hi! Ha! Ha! Ah! Me! Me! Oh! 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 Play the fucking track! Play that fucking track! Oh, there it is. Are you ready? We're opening up on a computer, log in and do this. Our fucking teacher said, Postman gone! Last name, first name, Joel. Like a sprained ankle, boy, ain't nothing to play with. Started off 
local But thanks to all the haters, I know G4 pilots on a first name basis I don't need no speed, no, I don't need no hair lights I don't want no talk, you can keep your gas man I'm a baseline junkie, I'm a baseline junkie 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 Big, dirty, stinking bass Dirty, stinking bass Big, dirty, stinking bass Dirty, dirty, stinking big Dirty, stinking bass Dirty, stinking bass Big, dirty, stinking bass